Howdy folks, welcome back to War Thunder with the Mighty Jingles. It's War Thunder time again. Um, the game is... I mean, I've been singing this game's praises for months now. And, and rightfully so, it is a fantastic game. It's exceptionally well polished, it's very, very well optimised. It gets a lot of things right. That its competitors just don't. Um, it's got the right aircraft in the game for a start. Uh, I mean, how you can possibly imagine doing a Second World War up to the no early 1950s era flight sim and not have the Royal Air Force uh, and not have iconic aircraft like the ME262 or the the Corsair you know the, it just absurd you know again it gets the range of aircraft selection absolutely spot on and and the the aircraft that are in the game right now are probably only two-thirds of the aircraft that are actually slated to be included. There's all kinds of B-25s and B-29s and there's all sorts of other aircraft coming into the game. So, it, you know, it absolutely 100% nails the available aircraft right off the bat. So that's good. I also like the way it rewards you for how well you do, uh, regardless of how poorly your team does, for example. Um, and in the absence of uh, of rated matchmaking, of, well, in the absence of much matchmaking at all, if we're going to be brutally honest, uh, that's a really, really good idea. Um, in World of Tanks, for example, often it doesn't matter how well you do. If you're stuck with a team full of derps, you're going to walk away with a useless score. That, that doesn't happen in this. Unfortunately, that's one of the problems that I wanted to address today in this War Thunder video. And it's more specifically related towards ground attack aircraft and bombers. This is Lonely Island. It's a ground strike mission, but it's it's actually a unique ground strike mission. The team that uh, loses control of the single capture point uh, usually loses the game. But here's the thing. You can't land and capture that single capture point. The capture on this map is all done by the artificially intelligent... Uh, ground units. Now, at the start of the game, there are 12 ground targets on each side. And you can see the numbers just leaping up there. What's actually going on is there are a bunch of destroyers and a bunch of cargo ships. The cargo ships will start launching landing craft. When the landing craft reach the shore, they start launching tanks. So the number of ground targets available keeps going up and up and up unless you nail A, the cargo ships, B, the landing craft, and then start mopping up the tanks. So every cargo ship that you fail to kill ends up launching more landing craft. Every landing craft that you fail to kill ends up launching lots and lots of tanks. And it's the tanks that actually do the capturing and holding of the base. Uh, and they will fight it out with each other between themselves and the enemy tanks when they get ashore. So whoever gets the most tanks ashore will end up capturing the island. Now here's the problem. Basically what I'm doing in this mission is, as an experiment, I'm doing nothing but going after ground targets. And my team as a whole were better at going after the ground targets than the enemy team were. They were absolutely completely hopeless at protecting the ground attack aircraft and the bombers however. And most of the enemy players were pretty much just going for the air kills. And this is the problem I have with ground attack missions. When you're flying ground attack aircraft and bombers in War Thunder, in that you just don't get rewarded adequately for doing the job that the map demands you do. It's a ground strike map. You don't get rewarded adequately for going after the ground targets, even though you are winning the game for the team. It's the guys mincing around in the fighter aircraft farming air kills who always walk away with the best score. Now, I wouldn't have a problem with that in a domination map, but this is a ground strike map. And this is probably the worst example of it, purely because of the way the mechanics of this thing work. If you do a good job and you nail those cargo ships early on, 
It reduces the number of ground targets that are available for you to kill. And even if you don't, all of those fighters that get there ahead of you do a better job of killing them than you do anyway. And that's that's a massive problem with War Thunder if you're flying bombers like, you know, the JU-88, the Wellington. But because I was, um, I was playing this map as an experiment to uh, try to prove my point, I purposefully didn't, for example, pick the Americans, who don't get a lot of bombers early on, but they do get a lot of fighters that are capable of carrying bombs and rockets. If I'd been in a P-47D on this map, I would have been cleaning up. Because, first of all, I would have gotten to those ground targets a hell of a lot faster than any of these bombers or ground attack planes. And I would have been able to defend myself from the enemy fighters that were just waiting for us when we got there. Whereas, of flying these things, you literally get to drop your first, if you're lucky, and you don't get intercepted before you get there. You may get to drop your first bomb load, but you will never survive long enough to, uh, to reload and go around for a second pass. And the problem with the landing craft is they move too quickly for you to be able to hit them accurately from high altitude in a bomber. You have to get down low and bomb them from 300 feet, uh, two to 300 feet up, because they just move too quickly. Um, well, you know, once those cargo ships are done, y you're a low altitude attack aircraft regardless of what you're flying, or you're just not going to hit anything, and you just become easy prey for the fighters. Well, I say e easy prey for the fighters, even easier prey for the fighters. I mean, what's my altitude here? Look at the altitude I release these bombs, and I'm not leading them far enough. But I'm not much worse a bomber pilot than anybody else playing the game, and I still managed to totally miss those first two landing craft. Because they're just moving so much faster than I expected. Trying to hit those things from 3,000 metres up? Forget it. Just no way. And the most frustrating part about this whole thing is, I mean, I'm flying a JU-88 medium bomber here, and it's only got four bombs. <laughs> there are fighters with heavier bomb loads than that. I, I, would be, I would be better suited for doing the job of going after the ground targets in just about any American fighter aircraft you'd care to name than in a bomber. It is just absurd the way it's so hard in these mid-tier bombers to, to do anything worth, you know, worth a damn. And with the whole introduction in patch 1.27 of, well, they basically stripped the bomb loads off all of these bombers and, and, and started making you grind XP for the bomb pylons that enabled you to actually bomb things. I mean, the, the Mosquito is probably the best example. Best example? Worst example? <laughs> when you, uh, The Mosquito is the level 13 British bomber, or is it level 12? Uh, I, I can't remember. But it's in the British bomber line, and it doesn't get any bombs at all until you've ground out something like 90,000 experience on it. It's a bomber that cannot carry any bombs. Now, okay, the, mo the Mosquito is a unique and extreme example, but it's a good one. The, the fact that there is a... And it's yes, it's not a heavy bomber, even though it does sit in the British heavy bomber line. It's a fighter bomber. Um, and it was a very, very good fighter bomber. But the fact remains, it's a fighter bomber, and it can't equip any bombs when you buy the thing, which is just ridiculous. So, extreme example though it may be, it is an example of the kind of problem that bomber pilots have been facing ever since patch 1.27 came out. Um, and War Thunder makes you grind XP for bomb pylons that allow you to fit a meaningful bomb load to your bombers, uh, and you have to grind out that XP while carrying the equivalent of firecrackers under your wings and trying to evade enemy fighter aircraft while trying to drop these tiny little bombs that pretty much have to score direct hits on the targets, which means that you have to get low enough to ensure you do score a direct hit on the target, which means you rarely get to the target before getting shot down, and even if you do get to the target, you never, ever survive more than one bombing run before you're down in flames and then you jump into a fighter and actually start having some fun. Because let's not forget, at the end of the day, this is a game we are supposed to be having fun and flying bombers is just not fun. It's absolutely bloody awful. And here I am in this game doing absolutely nothing. 
he says, while shooting at uh, a Sturmovic, doing nothing but going after ground targets. I was screwed here. I set up my Stuka for a perfect dive on an enemy destroyer and just after I'd sacrificed a thousand meters of altitude somebody else killed it. <laughs> Which left me low, slow, enemy fighters all around, nothing for me to drop my bloody bombs on. So that was me stuffed in this, just in this particular example. But you know the point still stands. Um, let's say, let's say for example somebody else hadn't blown up that destroyer before I uh, got near him and I had managed to drop my bombs on him. Well, what then? I'm now at low altitude flying a slow, unmanoeuvrable Stuka that doesn't gain altitude very quickly at all with enemy fighters all over the place. I'd have, I'd have died anyway. Um, Stuka pilots everywhere will back me up on this one. This is what happens after you've released your bombs in a Stuka. You just get caned. The Sturmovic at least can take a bit of a beating. It can take more of a beating than a Wellington can, that's for sure. Bombers are just too fragile. And they don't do any... There's only one thing in this game that a bomber does better than a ground attack aircraft. Well, no, not so much a ground attack aircraft. There's only one thing in this game that a bomber does better than a fighter. And that's take down big immobile targets um, heavy bunkers for example heavy pillboxes uh, stuff that doesn't move stuff that the fighters can't kill um, heavy tanks heavy tank columns um, big bombers with lots of big bombs are very very good at taking out from high altitude uh, where they can just set up and carpet bomb the road that those heavy tanks are driving along uh, with their 500 kilo bombs, or their 1000 kilo bombs. But here's the thing, do you have any idea how long you have to fly a bomber using shit little 250 pound or 50 kilo bombs before you can actually mount those bombs? And do you know how close you have to get to the target with those bombs, how low you have to fly in order to accurately hit anything that's moving with those bombs? Because you'd think that the fighter pilots, with the with their... 250 pound bombs under their wings and the, or if you're a hell if you're an American fighter pilot with your thousand pound bomb under your fuselage you'd think they would be going after the uh, you know the moving targets and leaving the immobile targets to the guys 3,000 meters up in the heavy bombers but they don't fighter jockeys love an easy kill just as much as anybody else they prefer going after the targets that aren't trying to dodge their bombs but the thing is, I mean, the ultimate kick in the nuts for bomber pilots is that even on a map like this, which is a dedicated ground strike map, it's supposed to be a map where killing the ground... It's all supposed to be about killing the ground targets. And despite, you know, even leaving aside the fact that the fighters are better at killing those ground targets than you will ever be in a bomber. Even on a map like this, it's not the guy who kills the most ground targets who gets the most experience and credits. Uh, the rewards all still go to the fighter jockeys. I've been playing Pearl Harbor, for example, um, prior to patch 1.27, when bombers were actually reasonably good. Um, and I spent that entire game just carpeting the enemy carriers, because I was the only guy with a bomber, and the only one capable of actually killing the enemy carriers. And so, of course, while I'm... You know, dro dropping my bombs on these carriers and then flying evasively and then reloading my bombs and dropping them on the only enemy carriers and then getting my bomber shot down and jumping into another bomber and doing it all again. While I'm doing that, everybody else is shooting down enemy aircraft and they're, they're shooting up, you know, they're machine gunning all the landing craft and the medium tanks and the scout cars and so on and so on and so on. Um, and of course, the last two things left alive were the two enemy carriers. And, and I killed both of those enemy carriers. It took, took me the length of time it took everybody else to kill everything else. That's how long it took me to nail these two carriers. And I won the game and I walked out of it with the second worst score. That's the benefit you get for being a bomber pilot. And it's no different in this one. I wasn't particularly good in that game. In fact, I was pretty crap. But I still came second out of 15 in killing ground targets on a ground attack map. And look at my score. Let's have a look at the guy on 
both teams who got the top score. And what did they do? Oh, farmed air kills <laughs> on a ground strike mission. And this is why it's doubly frustrating being a bomber pilot in War Thunder. For a start, your bombers are shit. Since patch 1.27, they can't carry enough bombs to do anything meaningful and they're too easy to shoot down. Were they too powerful before patch 1.27? I, I don't think so. Um, I certainly managed to get shot down a lot in my Wellington bombers, but I felt competitive nevertheless. Uh, since, since patch 1.27, I just I haven't played them. I haven't played them um, at all, ever. Uh, now, I'm mostly... Uh, well, I, not mostly. I just I will only put a bomber in my lineup now if I have to put a bomber in to fill up my team. Otherwise, forget it. But you know, th there's a really, really simple solution to this problem, um, and it it wouldn't take a massive amount of programming. All you have to do is increase the amount of XP that you get for hitting a target with a bomb. Simple as that. Uh, if you've ever been bombing a, a, a large pillbox for example and your bombs just haven't been big enough to take him out uh, you'll do damage to him but you know not enough to destroy him you'll see that you get i don't know 60 experience for hitting the target make it 250 experience for hitting the target reward the bomber pilots that will spend the entire game dropping their shitty little 50 kilo bombs all 32 of them in the case of some of these uh, medium bombers. I think the HE-111H can carry 50... I mean, before it can carry anything that can actually crack a target, it gets 32 of these 50 kilo bombs. If that's all you're giving them to bomb with, then reward them for hitting the target with those bombs. Because he has to be good to hit a target with a 50 kilo bomb. The, the explosion radius isn't massive. He has to be good and hit the target accurately. Reward them for doing that. that. That's all you have to do. And that'll convince, that'll, that will give some incentive to the bomber pilots to actually keep flying the bombers and keep dropping bombs on ground targets because at the moment it's just not worth it. You'll advance through the game much faster just jumping into a fighter, sticking a bomb under the wing if you have to, and farming air kills, regardless of whether you're on a ground strike or domination mission. The guys that farm the most air kills always walk away with the most experience. Bomber pilots need to be rewarded for dropping bombs and hitting targets with them. And the only way to do that is to make it worth more experience and credits for hitting the target with the bombs, even if you don't kill them. For example, spent an entire game on port, on the Pearl Harbor map, killing two enemy carriers, and walked out with the second worst score on the entire team, despite the fact that I actually won the game for the team. That cannot happen. I should have been getting more experience for every bomb that hit that target. And that's all you have to do to make bomber pilots happy. Bomber pilots will put up with having shitty bomb loads. They will put up with being easy to kill, as long as they get rewarded adequately in XP and credits for every bomb they drop that hits the target. And at the moment, they're just it's just not happening. And that's all they need to do to fix it. Or, alternatively, just do nothing and carry on rewarding bomber pilots and ground attack pilots with shit scores like that and watch people not bother flying bombers and ground attack aircraft anymore. Choice is yours, Gaijin. The problem exists. It doesn't take a lot to do something about it. So that was the Mighty Jingles, having a, a very rare complaint about War Thunder, but you know, the game isn't perfect. It does have problems, and I, I feel I can't just sit here singing the game's praises and ignoring real issues. And the plight of bomber pilots is definitely one of them. As always, watch your six, guys, and I'll catch you next time.